good morning everybody present over here my name is dr nagjyoti i have completed my bms graduation from tarnath government ayurvedic medical college ballari today i am here to present you on importance of vitamin b12 and vitamin d in diabetes reversal so mainly we will look into the contents introduction vitamin b12 information about vitamin d effects on diabetes supplements and treatments and conclusion welcome to my presentation on the role of vitamin b12 and vitamin d in diabetes reversal will explore the definition uses source daily requirements uh, for the human body deficiency signs symptoms supplements and treatment of these vital vitamins in the context of diabetes management so what is vitamin b12 vitamin b12 is also known as cobalamin it is water soluble vitamin that plays a crucial role in various bodily functions it's an essential nutrient meaning that the body requires it for proper functioning but cannot produce on its own therefore it must be obtained through diet or supplements so what are the functions of vitamin b12 b12 is very important and uh, for the several physiological processes including red blood cell formation so vitamin b12 is necessary for the production of healthy red blood cells it's involved in the synthesis of dna and rna which are essential for cell growth and division it also helps in nervous system function Vitamin B12 plays a role in the maintenance of the nervous system. It is involved in the formation of myelin sheath, a protective covering above around the nerve fibers that help help it is also helpful in energy metabolism. Vitamin B12 is required for the metabolism of carbohydrates, proteins and fats. It helps convert the food into energy that the body can use. It's used in DNA synthesis. B12 is vital for the synthesis of DNA the genetic material present in all cells this process is essential for the cell replication and growth it also helps in brain function some suggest uh, some studies suggest that vitamin B12 may have a role in maintaining cognitive function and preventing the neurological disorders although more research is needed in this area and the sources of vitamin B12 Vitamin B12 is produced only by bacteria and microorganisms. Meat and milk are full of bacteria and because they are the decaying substances. So these foods have plenty of vitamin B12. However, many vegetarians and uh, non-vegetarians, especially those aged 35 and above are deficient in vitamin B12. Some of the sources, the very good sources of vitamin B12 include beef, pork, ham, poultry products, eggs, lamb, fish especially the haddock and tuna daily products uh, such as milk cheese yogurt and some nutritional yeast products also a rich content of vitamin b12 additionally manufacturers the fortify some types of plant milks and breakfast cereals with vitamin b12 so these are the major sources of vitamin b12 where we can get it for our daily needs so daily requirements of vitamin b12 how much should you can get okay how much vitamin b12 you can get for a, on a daily basis so the average recommendation daily amounts measured in microgram that is mcg vary by age if uh, a person is a infant for a baby infant up to age 6 months it is 0.4 mcg for babies age 7 to 12 months it is 0.5 mcg for children for children aging 1 to 3 years it is 0.9 mcg and for kids aged 4 to 8 years it is 1.2 mcg children aged above 9 to 13 years it is 1.8 mcg so teenagers from 14 to 18 years they will be having 2.4 mcg per day 2.6 per day mcg is for a pregnant woman and 2.8 mcg per day for breastfeeding women adults uh, in general can have 2.4 mcg per day same for 2.6 for pregnant and 2.8 for breastfeeding mother now we can see for the deficiency signs and symptoms actually uh, either it is vitamin b12 or vitamin d anything uh, will not get to know it very easily as signs and symptoms persist and when we we are not able to get go with our daily routines then we'll consult the doctors and then through some tests we get to know so let's see what are the deficiency signs and symptoms to be extra cautious and to maintain our health there are uh, various signs and symptoms of vitamin b12 it affects our health severely including it regulates the heart palpitation vitamin b12 deficiency will cause heart palpitation pallor of the skin even yellowish discoloration of the eyes and the skin also shortness of breath weakness and tiredness 
nausea, vomiting, muscle weakness, swollen or smooth red tongue, constipation, diarrhea, loss of appetite, weight loss, irritability or depression, tingling hands of the feet, memory loss, vision loss, yellowing of the eyes, disorientation, dizziness, confusion, mood swings, all these can be taken as signs and symptoms. And the major causes uh, that we can tell is the lack of a well-balanced diet. We can go for, uh, if the person is vegetarian, that is purely vegan diet, no, not taking any animal product, then also we can have, and that is the one of the cause, then a uh, few of the medications and even toxins like alcohol and all, all this cause the deficiency. Also the pernicious anemia. When your stomach is not able to absorb and uh, if it uh, leads to anemia, then that is also a reason. And also the bowel problems like Crohn disease and all, they will cause vitamin B12 deficiency. Then what level of vitamin B12 is normal and what is concerning? Although MedPlus says that normal values are 160 to 950 picograms per, milli, per milliliter, that is PGML, the clinical reference, but up to date says that a normal serum vitamin B12 is above 300 pg per ml. Serum vitamin B12 uh, above 300 pg ml is interpreted as normal. Patients with B12 uh, levels less than or if it is between 200, 200 to 300, they are considered as borderline. And further enzymatic testing may be helpful in the diagnosis. Patients with B12 uh, levels below 200 are considered as deficient. So how is it diagnosed? Okay, we saw what are the ranges, what, how much we have to take, but how can it be diagnosed? So, vitamin B12 deficiency is usually diagnosed by a blood test or urine test. Preferably at the doctor's centers when we are not good going with our daily routine, then we will consult our doctor if we are having severe weakness and tiredness, dizziness and also uh, all the symptoms which I told. If we are having those, we will consult the doctor and then we will get to know about the test. And here's the way how we can be diagnosed with we are deficient or we are having normal vitamin B12. So this test chiefly checks the levels of vitamin B12 in the blood or the urine to cause the body's overall vitamin B12 stores. The test usually measures either of the following or uh, sometimes all of them. That is methyl uh, malonic acid, that is MMA, holotranscobalamin, that is holotc, and homocysteine. It also sees the level of red blood cells and their appearance, the levels of iron and foliate, and intrinsic factor antibodies. So through this, we will get to know about uh, how much vitamin B12 we are having. Now, let's move to vitamin D. So vitamin D is also called as sunshine vitamin. Calciferol, anti-tachytic factor, calciterol, uh, cholecalciferol, that is D3, and ergocalciferol. So it is vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin that plays a crucial role in mentoring overall health. It is unique among all the vitamins because it can be synthesized by the human body in response to sunlight exposure. Vitamin D is essential for various bodily functions, including the bone health, the immune support system, and uh, the regulation of cellular process, everything. It is very much important for that. So in vitamin D, uh, D also we'll see what are the availabilities of vitamin B12 sources, signs of deficiency, causes, and also the treatment. So types of vitamin D. There are two main forms of vitamin D that are important for humans. That is vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. Vitamin D2 is ergocalciferol and vitamin D3 is polycalciferol. Vitamin D3 is primarily synthesized in the skin when it is exposed to the ultraviolet uh, UV rays, radiation from the sunlight. Vitamin D2, on the other hand, it can be obtained from certain plant-based sources or supplements. If we see about the functions of vitamin D, we can it helps in healthy bones, healthy teeth, supports the immune system, improves the brain function, supports a healthy nervous system, supports the lung function, improves heart rate, reduces the risk of flu, prevents rickets, regulates insulin level, and also is responsible for healthy infants. It also maintains normal cellular growth and function. It inhibits the parathyroid hormone secretion from the parathyroid gland. The major biological function of vitamin D is to maintain the normal blood levels of calcium and phosphorus as it helps in calcium absorption and helping to, to form and maintain the strong bones. 
so next moving on we'll see for the sources of vitamin d so major source is the sunlight okay and other dietary supplements that uh, where we get vitamin d is milk eggs mushroom pork beef liver uh, sole of flounder or cereals we can also go for coral or uh, swiss cheese and uh, canned salmon mm -hmm. cod liver oil sardines then butter or chocolate milk or tofu we can also have goat cheese or orange juice oysters so all these complement the vitamin d and these are the rich sources of vitamin d so uh, now we'll know the daily requirements of vitamin d from birth to 12 months it is 400 international units or 10 mcg children and teen it is 600 international units or a uh, 15 uh, mcg in adults up to 70 years it is same 600 uh, international units and 15 mcg in the pregnant and breastfeeding women also it's same 600 international units and 15 mcg but in adults and uh, aged more than 71 years it is 800 uh, international units and 20 mcg now the deficiency signs and symptoms but let us first know what are the causes because we are uh, having a lifestyle like uh, we are working from home we are staying in homes we are staying in offices we are not like our ancestors maybe our ancestors never had vitamin d deficiency because they were too much exposed to the sun uh, they were working in the fields they were doing uh, physical activities and uh, they were getting enough vitamin d but nowadays it's not so because people are not getting out of their homes to get the healthy sunlight fresh sunlight because of the schedules and because of sedentary lifestyle and so on so main cause for vitamin d deficiency is insufficient sunlight exposure even now people if they get exposed to sunlight they will be wearing and they will be uh, afraid of sunburns so they will cover their body or they'll use uh, sunscreens so that is one of the reason that uh, we are not getting enough uh, vitamin d we are not getting enough sunlight to synthesize vitamin d in our body so that is one reason that is insufficient sunlight exposure and also inadequate dietary intake so we as uh, the sensual people we are not even having our uh, balanced diet so we lack in vitamin d uh, supplements and also the diet so these are the main causes and uh, vitamin d deficiency like uh, what symptoms they cause is a person will be having low immunity anxiety or depression tiredness and fatigue chronic pain loss in the bone density impaired wound healing impaired wound healing as we see in diabetes also and tiredness and fatigue and obesity all these we see in diabetes as well then the person will be having hair loss muscle pain decreased endurance high or raising blood pressure so there are many other symptoms that uh, cause vitamin d uh, deficiency and uh, they also include uh, osteomalacia uh, malformation of the bones rickets insomnia cognitive impairment and even myopia then few of the causes also include the metabolic abnormalities with absorption or metabolism of vitamin d so either we are not getting or the thing that we are getting is not absorbed by our body well second is secondary indoor lifestyle regular use of the sunblock low stomach as cause of vitamin d deficiency and as vitamin d is a fat soluble nutrient which means liver or gall bladder dysfunction may also contribute to the deficiency of vitamin d so what are the consequences is impaired insulin sensitivity compromised immune function and weakened bones leading to fractures so the risk of fractures is very much increased as we all know that vitamin d enhances the immune system and it is also required for the absorption of vitamin and uh, uh, calcium and phosphorus also so it is also required for the uh, healthy thyroid function and to prevent depression and anxiety as well as uh, neuromuscular functions so it is very much important and if we lack vitamin d we'll have uh, the uh, as i have described those signs and symptoms so what level of vitamin d is normal levels of vitamin d that is levels of 50 n mole per liter or above are adequate for more people for bone and overall health but levels below 30 n mole are too low and might weaken your bones and affect your health levels above 125 n mole per liter are too high and may cause health problems 
so it's not that uh, we should have a normal levels but we should also know what low vitamin d level causes and what high de- vitamin d level causes so when we move on to the management of de- deficiency of vitamin b12 and vitamin d so uh, vitamin b12 will mainly get it uh, through the food items okay but we have to see like how much uh, deficiency we are having if the deficiency is too severe then we can't uh, keep on uh, believing on the food items okay so diet definitely we can improve but not to an extent that uh, when uh, we are having severe anemia and all we can't trust on that we have to go for additional supplements injections and the treatment aspect as well okay so if uh, vitamin b12 level is the moderately less then we can adapt uh, and change our lifestyle ha- habits and food items we have to take more of the food which is rich in vitamin b12 like meat shellfish milk fortified cereals eggs and all we have to take this because uh, usually purely vegeta- uh, vegetarian people will face more of vitamin b12 deficiencies as compared to the uh, non vegetarians and uh, vitamin d so getting the vitamin d for your body is very much important get some sun to have some fun this is what i would say the De- vitamin d deficiency is also seen when the sun does sunlight doesn't reach us so actually india is kind of lucky country where we get enough of sunlight almost uh, throughout the year but in us and all where there is too much of cold and the sun doesn't reach so they are having more percentage of uh, vitamin d deficiency the prevalence of vitamin d deficiency is more over there so in winters and all when we don't get enough uh, vitamin d then we should uh, rely on the supplements and the treatment aspects and when we have sunlight like in summer and other seasons then we can have uh, vitamin uh, d through direct sunlight so in the early morning when there is fresh sunlight we can uh, go for 10 to 15 minutes or 15 to 25 minutes based on the health condition of the patient but please avoid sunburns because excessive absorption of vitamin d also causes sun sunburns now treatment of vitamin b12 so vitamin b12 deficiency can be treated with uh, im injections of cyanocobalamin or oral vitamin b12 therapy also but a guidelines from the british society for hematology recommends injection three times per week for two weeks in patients without neuro- neurological deficits and if neurological deficits are present injection should be given every other day that is alternate day for up to 3 weeks or until the further improvement is noted so even personally i have been diagnosed with vitamin b12 deficiency mm-hmm. and uh, i took uh, the supplements as well and the methylcobalamin injections because it was too low after complete course then i was uh, well with the vitamin b12 levels so it is based on the level of vitamin b12 that is deficient a uh, treatment would be planned that is alternate days for a week or two and then for two days once three days once and so on the treatment will go up to six months so to regain the vitamin b12 that you have lost that is deficient it will take almost six months to 12 months to be normal with the levels but in vitamin b12 there are also oral nasal and other supplements but they are having uh, less significance so i'll not be discussing about that let's come to the vitamin d deficiency prevention and treatment so prevention is uh, we have to keep taking on supplements and we have to check our vitamin b12 and vitamin d levels regularly at least once a year so that we are not deficient or we are not excessive of the supplements while considering the treatment in premature neonates we should give 1000 international units per day in neonates or less than 1 month to infants like 1 to 12 months we can give 2000 international units per day from 1 to 18 years we can give 60 international units weekly for 6 weeks as many of us might have taken this tablets like we can get uh, vitamin uh, d3 or shellcal d3 these are the supplements that we can get and the doctors prescribe it weekly once and uh, there are also injections when prescribed by the doctor and uh, at re- risk groups that is 400 to 1000 international units can be taken or it is depends on the age so Uh, when we are here that is the role of vitamin b12 and vitamin d in diabetes reversal vitamin b12 and vitamin d are definitely very essential nutrients that play important roles in overall health but their scientific roles in diabetes reversal are still subjects of ongoing research and study right. but these so, vitamins are not directly these these are not the direct treatments for diabetes 
they can have indirect effects on various aspects of metabolic health which could contribute to diabetes management and potentially so vitamin b12 in diabetes reverses nervous system function vitamin b12 is important for maintaining the health of nerves and the nervous system people with diabetes can be at risk for nerve damage like uh, we saw in the earlier uh, sessions and discussion also that is diabetic neuropathy and i also uh, shared information about uh, diabetic food uh, so in diabetic neuropathy we have numbness and we can't uh, know the sensation we also never know the wounds of our foot it happens because so in that also it happens because of vitamin b12 deficiency and having adequate b12 levels might help support the nerve health when our nerve system is health uh, he- healthy and uh, then we can prevent the nervous uh, damage in the damage occurring to the nervous system then in the energy metabolism vitamin b12 is involved in the metabolism of carbohydrates proteins and fats which can indirectly impact the blood sugar levels so we know in sugar in a diabetes that either we are not able to produce the insulin or our body is not able to absorb it and we have also seen that insulin is there it is sending the sugars in but there is the lack of key because our cells is uh, full of fats which cannot allow the glucose to come inside the cell so overall energy metabolism is monitored by vitamin b12 so proper metabolism of these nutrients can contribute to the stable energy levels and potentially support the diabetes management now anemia prevention so vitamin b12 deficiency can lead to anemia which can exaggerate the symptoms of fatigue and weakness common concerns for people with diabetes addressing b12 deficiency can contribute to overall well-being as we know diabetic patients will definitely be having low energy levels and fatigue and all these things now one more thing i would uh, like to add if we are having pernicious anemia and uh, vitamin b12 will simultaneously cause a low hb one of my cousin is also suffering from the same she is having low vitamin b12 and her hb is uh, around 5.2 so she never got to know she thought uh, tiredness is because of something else because of excess work but neglecting our body is a main reason that we do not reach early diagnosis so it could have been treated early when she was having 8 or 9 hb but now she is at a stage like we have to go for blood transfusion so vitamin b12 not only interferes in this but it interferes in various other functions of the body and it is uh, crucial for our health it also regulates uh, even vitamin b12 deficiency can also cause anemia and uh, vice versa is also possible so if your vitamin b12 level is too low and your hb is also low you are having an anemia then you have to go for blood transfusion and then cobalamine injections which will then moderate and bring it in normalcy vitamin d and its reverse relation will know it now so if we all of us we know insulin sensitivity and insulin resistance as well in diabetic patients so some suggest uh, some studies suggest that vitamin d might play a role in improving the insulin sensitivity which is a key factor in type 2 diabetes that's what i said when uh, sugar is there insulin is there in our body in our cells but it is not able to send the glucose inside the cell that is insulin resistance is there but vitamin d will help to remove that resistance so insulin sensitivity the first to so how effectively the body cells respond to insulin and take up glucose from the blood stream so indirectly it helps in diabetes control inflammation and immune response function vitamin d is known to have anti inflammatory effects and supports the immune system chronic inflammation is linked to insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes adequate vitamin d levels might help to mitigate inflammation and support the immune health also beta cell function vitamin d receptors are found in the pancreatic beta cells which are responsible for producing and releasing insulin some research suggests that vitamin d might influence the beta cell function and the insulin secretion as well bone health vitamin d is crucial for the bone health and people with diabetes are at an increased risk of bone fractures maintaining adequate vitamin d levels can contribute to overall skeletal health so what can we conclude from this presentation in conclusion Uh, well both vitamin b12 and d have potential benefits for diabetic management but there are not the only solutions or the standalone solution for diabetes reversal it's important to know that well these potential roles are interesting and relevant and it's just still going on and the exact mechanism by which vitamin b12 and d influences the diabetes management are not fully understood it's crucial for individuals with diabetes to work closely with healthcare professional to develop a comprehensive management plan that includes appropriate medical treatment lifestyle modification such as balanced diet and the diet that which are which we are working on that is low fat high fiber diet and uh, reducing our carbs to some 
thank you very much naga jyoti for that uh, beautiful session uh, let us introduce uh, uh, ourselves like uh, in divine veda we work on uh, ma- on uh, majorly metabolic disorders and also the autoimmune disorders like uh, uh, we have very good uh, track record in uh, diabetes reversal and uh, we have got uh, even type 1 diabetes also reversed so that is uh, that is the, that is the work that we have been doing it and uh, if anybody is interested uh, i will i will be sharing the whatsapp group link and uh, in the chat so they can join that whatsapp group and also they can share with uh, their friends and relatives who are suffering with especially the type 2 diabetes and all and uh, in a in a matter of around 4 months we give 100% uh, uh, reversal in type 2 diabetes especially the type 2 diabetes now coming to the vitamin b12 deficiency and uh, vitamin d okay i have been uh, uh, since I, almost some 5 6 years we have been working on healthcare especially the autoimmune disorders and metabolic disorders like uh, diabetes and all what i have observed is um, one reason for the uh, vitamin b12 and uh, especially the vitamin b12 deficiency is uh, uh, major reason is uh, leaky gut uh, so uh, we will uh, after having so much of um, bad foods and uh, uh, our uh, Uh, the gut gut will be very weak okay so when we have a very leaky uh, bad gut uh, bacteria and all those things so we get this uh, leaky gut so and also what i have observed is uh, even uh, people who have uh, n- lots of non veg right even they also suffer with uh, vitamin b12 uh, deficiency so and also uh, in nowadays what we have seen is uh, the pollution right the pollution is uh, plays a very big uh, role mm, so here uh, that is one of the reason okay and also the vitamin d right vitamin d is uh, because of the pollution reason vitamin d uh, deficiency also happens to get this good uh, like uh, vitamin b12 level whenever it is at a bad state what we have to do is we have to go for um, supplements even with the vitamin d uh, so this vitamin b12 to get uh, naturally the vitamin b12 increase in the vitamin b12 level uh, so the best is uh, fermented food mm, fermented food like uh, mm, the uh, sauerkraut and uh, beet kors Uh, and also the humbly and all those things uh, plays a very good role when we take it uh, when we take it for a longer time like 3 uh, to 4 months the vitamin b12 levels will get naturally increased mm, so and uh, uh, before we take this uh, vitamin b12 to increase the vitamin b12 before we take this probiotic food what we have to do is we have to load our digestive system with the prebiotics like uh, uh, the soluble fibers and all those things Uh, so if we take like uh, for example the ashgard juice and all those things right what they will do is it will be having lot of uh, prebiotics like uh, soluble fiber and all those things this soluble fiber will act as a food for that probiotic so that uh, when we do that then what will happen the uh, automatically the uh, the probiotics which we supply will get a good uh, uh, source of food in the uh, prebiotic as as in in the prebiotic so then automatically uh, the level of uh, vitamin b12 will get increased so that is one thing and also for especially for uh, vitamin d right uh, what we have to do is we have to do the sun bath and also apart from that we need to go for uh, um, sun dried uh, mushrooms like oyster mushrooms and all those things uh, when we have it for regularly then obviously the vitamin d levels will also get improved so any any other questions sir i have a query typically uh, when we talk about uh, vitamin d the tests uh, that the doctors do is uh, for vitamin d3 yeah only. so whereas i saw in the presentation that there are two varieties vitamin d2 and uh, d3 yes and even when we take the supplements you know honestly i i am also uh, taking uh, uh, you know vitamin uh, d supplements now but uh, that is uh, vitamin d3 that cholecalciferol is uh, you know what i have been taking yes. so I, i i did not understand the significance of d2 though it, it is shown that you know it is a combination of d2 and d3 but yeah. uh, i i mean whenever we go for a uh, vitamin d supplement they typically give d3 only so okay. is there any uh, you know uh, relevance to only d3 or uh, d2 is also required but uh, there is a different supplement for d2 
yeah d3 d3 is the one which is very important otherwise uh, d uh, other other two are not uh, so significant that is why that is why we mostly uh, concentrate on d3 levels okay so it is okay see when we take this uh, uh, supplements right uh, so like even they also uh, that also uh, includes the d3 levels so that is uh, that is one thing and even even in uh, vitamin b12 also i forgot to mention one thing uh, there are two things one is methyl cobalamin and cyanocobalamin okay see our body what we have observed is uh, uh, normally our body will synthesize uh, uh, this uh, uh, methyl cobalamin and uh, uh, not the cyanocobalamin so that's why what uh, what we have to do is whenever we are taking supplements we have to go for uh, methyl cobalamin uh, based uh, supplement that is very important yeah the second uh, query that i uh, had was uh, typically for uh, vegetarians you know i saw the major sources of uh, vitamin b12 and d are predominantly from uh, you know the animal sources so of late you know there have been um, you know a lot of talks around uh, the animal based uh, products including the you know uh, dairy products right so uh, though being a being a vegetarian and taking uh, my own example being a vegetarian i would not even prefer to uh, you know uh, take eggs all right so uh, but but if i uh, rely only on uh, uh, you know vegetables and other cereals uh, that we normally consume in our normal diet so may not uh, give us the adequate levels of uh, vitamin uh, b12 uh, and uh, d as well so okay. uh, if 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 we avoid even uh, the dietary products how how do we you know uh, get uh, vitamin d and b12 through natural sources uh, or me or or is it only through the supplement that uh, we should get it okay good question uh, see what we have done is uh, uh, in the past around uh, six months uh, we have got the test done for vitamin b12 and what we have observed is around 80 percent of the people uh, used to consume non-veg okay non-veg and also the dairy products and all of them have found to be having vitamin b12 deficiency so now uh, it is very much clear that this is not the only source of uh, this is the this is not the only source and also this is not the uh, only uh, source where we can bet for vitamin b12 okay the best aspect is um, uh, we can go for whole food plant based okay see uh, when it comes to the dairy products when we quit the dairy products we can go for uh, like other source of dairy products like uh, peanut curd okay and uh, cashew curd and all those things okay to make uh, 1 liter of uh, peanut curd it will cost only around 10 rupees okay so it is not only uh, affordable and also it is practically possible and we have done it and uh, when we have worked with uh, many of our patients we have found it to be it is possible so i have one uh, person who, who, who uh, is around around 20 years old and he had been taking uh, non vegetarian for lifelong Okay, and uh, he stopped uh, non-vegetarian and also the dairy products and he has been now living without that and uh, he is regularly having the uh, peanut curd and uh, other as and also the sauerkraut and all those things and, and uh, surprise, surprisingly his vitamin B12 level has increased naturally. So he is not, initially he took uh, the uh, supplements, vitamin B12 supplements. Now he is not taking, but uh, he is having a very steady and uh, uh, comfortable levels of vitamin B12. So that's what, like when we, uh, around 40, 50 years back, people used to drink uh, the stream water and also the well water uh, without uh, uh, purifying it with uh, UV rays and all those things, UV filter and RO filter and all those things. When we do that, uh, when we do the RO filter and UV uh, based uh, purification, what will happen is all the good bacteria will get killed. So we won't get the bacteria and that bacteria will help uh, to get the vitamin B12 levels improved in our uh, body. So now when we are not getting those things, the best source of uh, um, replenishing the levels is the uh, fermentation, fermented foods, like, uh, as I said, uh, the sauerkraut and all those things. So there is no need to take, uh, I don't, uh, I don't believe that one will get vitamin B12 uh, only through non-veg. It is not, it is not true. 
okay so what we can do is we can get this uh, vitamin b12 levels with uh, the plant source also that is possible and we have proved it and uh, it has even worked with me also and it has worked with many of my patients it is possible hope i have answered my your question yes yes sir thank you so much for fluctuating diabetes uh, what is the root cause okay is it uh, on the in the fasting or else like uh, in the uh, after food that you're not sure uh, not because noticed. there are there are two two states one is uh, hypoglycemia and another is hyperglycemia so if it is uh, before the food means uh, it will be hypoglycemia so it, it it that's what you have to observe the uh, limb like the fluctuations then only we'll be able to comment okay we'll observe that sir yeah yeah so uh, what i suggest is if it is the uh, the fluctuations are too much you can go for cgms continuous uh, glucose monitor uh, system uh, it will cost you around 4000 bucks and uh, but it will give you a very good uh, understanding for around 2 uh, weeks time uh, so then probably you will be able to observe and uh, you yourself will be able to understand okay what is happening and all those things so i have i have tried with a uh, few of my patients and uh, it has given good result so probably you can uh, with for this type of fluctuations you can try it out uh, sure sir okay. uh, actually the doctor has also suggested the same yeah, yeah. go for cgm test yeah yeah so we will probably do that yeah yeah thank you okay, okay. so we are done with the presentation and uh, once again thanks to nagajyoti for the beautiful presentation and uh, thanks everyone for attending this uh, session